but it, we're absolutely delighted that when people from your Palestine support group here heard that Jeff Halper was going to be in London, uh, you approached us and asked if we could be squeezed into the schedule, and I said, we're absolutely delighted. Uh, my name is Linda Ramsden, and I'm the director of ICAD UK. So we're here to support the Israeli Committee Against House Demolition, which is based in Jerusalem. And in a minute, uh, the director, Jeff Helper, will uh, be introducing their work and then going on and presenting some analysis for you. But at the end of this meeting, if you want to know more and connect with us in the UK, you can do that. We've got a website. This is our um, leaflet about our, our work here. All those, the number of demolitions is escalating. So now it's more than 27,000 uh, Palestinian homes that have been demolished in the occupied territories. But otherwise, the information here is all correct. Um, on the website, you'll find loads of leaflets, resources that you can download free of charge. And um, so they cover very specific areas in the occupied territories and uh, specific issues. And these come with maps, statistics, quotes, you know, photos, as well as the information. And um, hopefully, you'll find that they're really great resources as you continue your work here. The other thing we've got is this one uh, little booklet called Counter Rhetoric, and it's reframing the Israel-Palestine conflict. And what's good about this, it's like a slogans book, but it's been written by people who are Jewish, Jewish Israelis. So when you come up against people who are saying, oh, you know, um, you're, you're one-sided, or there's only Palestinians, well, there are you know, Jewish and Jewish Israelis who have a different opinion on what is happening on the ground. So I said it'll, it'll counter what you hear in the media and lots of slogans and, and from other places. So it gives me without um, further ado, <laughs> great pleasure to introduce Jeff Helper and uh, Jeff. Over to you. Thank you. Did you guys want to say something first about anything? Um, uh, no? I don't know. Talking about your group or about your, okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, I'm Jeff Halper, as you know. Um, I'm the head of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions. And we're an Israeli peace and human rights organization. We've been in existence for like 15 years now. That's dedicated to ending the occupation completely and totally. Um, and to achieving a just peace between Israelis and Palestinians. And we'll talk a little bit later about what that means. Um, but we take the issue of house demolitions as our focus. Because um, on the one level, it, it humanizes the occupation. It's not just occupation in some abstract political se sense. But, you know, there's human stories, human tragedies, human uh, suffering going on, and that's, that's an important uh, thing. Also, when we go out to resist demolitions of houses or to rebuild homes, which we do, um, it's a very important uh, source of solidarity between us as Israeli Jews and Palestinians. Um, but on another level, it also really helps us to explain to people how the occupation works uh, and what Israel's intentions are. And, you know, I'm an anthropologist by profession. There's a few anthropology students here in the audience. Um, and anthropologists approach the world from the ground up. And what we're trained to do is to read the landscape, to try to understand, well, it, I'll just tell you something cute. The, I think the essential question of anthropology is the essential question of life. How is that? I should write some <laughs> philosophical book or something. And that is really what anthropologists ask is, what in the hell is going on here? And the hell part is important. That's the critical part. Because journalists come in and they say, what's going on here? And they come in for a day or two and they talk to this person, that person, they write, you know, or a lot of people do that. The hell part is, what in the hell is going on here? Is what's going on really between the lines? 
you know, the people that are suffering know a piece of it, but they don't know what it, you know, your house is demolished, you're a Palestinian, you don't know why, what the Israeli political intentions are or whatever. And you can be an academic and you can do millions of hours of research on occupation, but if, unless you're there and you've experienced what this family has experienced, you really don't get it either. You have a piece of it. You see, politicians sitting in the parliament have a piece of government policy, but they don't always see the consequences and so on. So what anthropologists try to do is to put it together and in a critical kind of a way and in some ways to read the landscape. And that's why the house demolition issue has been so useful for us because it's really given us the ability to see what's going on on the ground and, and to, from that to, to extrapolate what Israeli policies are and what Israeli intentions are. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do today is kind of do a little bit of an overview because in about two hours the UN is supposed to vote on the Palestinians' request for, um, for recognition as a state. It's an important thing that's going to happen. They can't, Palestine can't become a member of the UN because you can only do that through the Security Council. And the United States has announced, last year in fact, it announced that it would uh, veto any Palestinian application to actually join the UN. And in fact, over the last year, the US hasn't allowed the Palestinian application even to come up for discussion in the Security Council. But by going to the General Assembly, where the United States and Britain and the other five permanent <coughs> members don't have a veto power, um, and everybody has one vote, then the Palestinians can easily get UN recognition for statehood. And what's important here, and we'll come back to it, is... Um, it's supposed to be remote controlling. This is kind of behind us. <laughs> All right, it doesn't matter. We can do it this way. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, is the issue is whether there'll be a Palestinian state that's viable, that's sovereign, or, or not. And then if the not, then what does that mean? And in fact, this is, I mean, I, most of you, I think, know the lay of the land. I won't, I won't get back into Occupation 101, but basically this is a map of the two-state solution. And uh, this has been, since 1967, the internationally accepted solution to the conflict, including Britain. Britain supports this, the United States, uh, the international system. And in fact, this is a solution, the two-state solution, that was accepted by the Palestinians back in 1988, more, uh, 25 years ago. Before Oslo, before everything else, the Palestinians accepted the two-state solution. Um, and that is basically that there would be a Palestinian state in the occupied territories, which are the West Bank, the West Bank of the Jordan River, East Jerusalem, including the Old City, and Gaza, which are the territories that were conquered in 1967 by Israel. And, uh, and in fact, all the occupied territories only amount to 22% of historic Palestine. Now, what we have to keep in mind is that in this country, this is really one country, from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River. The Palestinians call it Palestine. And they don't differentiate between West Palestine, East Palestine, this, it's Palestine. Jews call it the land of Israel. And again, it's seen, for example, in Israel, we don't call this the West Bank. We call this Judea and Samaria. The biblical term, you know, that's a part of the, of the land of Israel. Christians call it the Holy Land. Whatever you call it, it's really one unit. All these internal borders are recent and, and don't mean anything. So that in this one country today, the Palestinians are half the population. They're half the population today. And there's another four and a half to five million refugees that live around the country in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan that 
claim the right to return to their homeland. So that if even some of the refugees return, or in fact in the future if none of the refugees return, simply by demographic growth, the Palestinians will be the majority in this country. And yet, you know, we always hear about Ehud Barak's generous offer at Camp David. We never hear about the Palestinians' generous offer. It was actually probably too generous. And that is when the Palestinians accepted the two-state solution, which they still accept. That's what Abu Mazen is going to the UN about today. They basically gave up political claim to 78% of their historic homeland. That's a pretty generous offer. I don't know many colonized people that would say to their colonizers, you know what, take 78% of our country. It's yours. Even though we're half the population and we will be a majority, we will make peace with you and recognize you on, on less than a quarter of the land. And that, in fact, is what's, is what's happened. The whole struggle today of the Palestinians is for 22% of their historic homeland. That's it. When Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, goes to the UN, he's not asking for, for an inch of Israel proper, let's say, of 1948 Israel. He's asking for 22%. That's it. And Britain is, we'll see. We don't know how Britain's going to vote. And the United States is voting against. So, you know, even that two-state solution that for 45 years has been the accepted solution isn't really the solution of the international community because it's, it's <coughs> obvious that, that, that if, even through the UN, uh, even if the Palestinians are asking for something that's been the policy all these years, the United States and maybe Britain and, and other countries are going to say no. So there's a hidden